This video is brought to you by Ultium Designer. In today's episode, you will learn how to make yourself the most accurate digital weighing scale using the HX711 amplifier breakout board, a load cell or strain gauge, Arduino Nano or Arduino Uno, and an I2C supported SSD1306 O LED display module. It doesn't matter if you have a 5kg or 10kg or any other load cell because the method I'm going to explain can be implemented on similar load cells and HX711 amplifier boards. You can see I have two load cells. This one is 5kg and this one is 10kg. They have got the same size and the same color wires. These are the HX711 breakout boards. This one is the mini version of the HX711 and this one is slightly a bigger version. But it doesn't matter as both the modules have got the same pinout so you can use any of these HX711 amplifier boards. My digital weighing scale is highly accurate because I have calibrated it using just a single line of code. And of course I will explain the calibration process later in this video. And this is something that you are not supposed to skip otherwise you won't get the correct weight values. So without any further delay, let's get started. A load cell, also known as a strain gauge, is a device used to measure force or weight. It converts the applied force into an electrical signal that can be measured and analyzed. Load cells are commonly used in various applications such as industrial weighing scales, tension and compression measurement systems, material testing machines and force monitoring devices. The Wheatstone bridge configuration consists of four resistive elements including strain gauges, arranged in a diamond shape. When a force is applied, the resistance changes causing an imbalance in the Wheatstone bridge. This imbalance results in a voltage difference at the output terminals. By measuring this voltage difference, typically using an instrumentation amplifier like the HX711, the load cell can accurately determine the applied force or weight. The Wheatstone bridge configuration allows for precise measurement and compensation of any variations or environmental factors that could affect the load cell's performance. HX711 amplifier module has different gain values which are selectable 32, 64 and 128. Any of the mentioned gains can be selected and used in the programming. The HX711 is a 24-bit analog to digital converter ADC which has an amplifier that gives a maximum gain of 128 as per the data sheet. As you can see on the right side we have ground, DT, SCK and VCC while on the left side we have E plus, E minus, A minus, A plus, B minus and B plus. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the connections. I screwed this 5kg load cell to a metal frame that I salvaged from an old scale. You can also fix your load cell on a wooden sheet. Anyway, while fixing the load cell, pay a close attention to the arrow head. It should be pointing in the downward direction. And on the top side, I have attached the steel plate for me. This is the best setup I could think of. Connect the red and black wires of the load cell to the HX711 amplifier board E plus and E minus. Connect the white and green wires of the load cell to the HX711 amplifier board A minus and A plus respectively. Connect the VCC and ground pins of the HX711 board to the Arduino firefold and ground. In my case, I have connected these wires to the Arduino VN and ground pins as these are connected to this firefold and 3 amps power supply. Connect the SCK and DD pins to the Arduino pins 2 and 3 respectively. Connect the VCC and ground pins of the SSD1306 or LED display module to the Arduino 3.3 volt and ground pins. Connect the SCL and SDA pins of the OLED display module to the Arduino A5 and A4 pins. A5 is the SCL and A4 is the SDA. All these other components on this development board are not used. You can follow this circuit diagram. Now let's go ahead and install the required libraries. Ultium Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. Ultium Designer enables engineers to effortlessly connect with every facet of the electronics design process. Over 35 years of innovation and development focused on a truly unified design environment makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Ultium Designer, you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Route it your way through any angle, tuned for the delay, 
push, slide and walk around faster than ever. Easily work together with your mechanical team and forget about the days of swapping design files. Every design change stays in sync between Ultium Designer and SolidWorks, PTC Crew, Autodesk Inventor, Autodesk Fusion 360 or Siemens NX. Interact and collaborate with mechanical designers like never before in a photorealistic 3D design environment. One of the best things about Ultium Designer is that you can share your designs with your team members using Ultium 365. They can check your design, leave comments and if there are any issues, they can fix them from anywhere in the world. Ultium Designer also uses the world's fastest component search engine Octopart so you won't have any difficulty in searching for components. Links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopart are given in the description. While the Arduino IDE is open, go to the sketch menu, then to include library and click on the aid.zip library. Browse to the location and select this zip folder. You can download this library from our website electronicclinic.com and click on the open button. As you can see, I have already added this library. Next, we will install libraries for the SSD1306 or LED display module. For this, go to the sketch menu, then to include library and this time click on the manage libraries. Search for the Adafruit underscore GFX library. You can see I have already installed this library. Next, search for the Adafruit underscore SSD1306 library. You can see I have also installed this library. This is the final code. I have added the required libraries. I have defined the pins and variables. This calibration factor value may or may not work for you. Initially, you can start with this value measure the weights of some known objects or things. If the measured weight value is okay, then no problem. But if you get a wrong value, then just play with this value until you get an accurate weight value. It took me around 10 minutes to calibrate my weighing scale and I used this 2 kg weight during the calibration process. These lines of code is used for the OLED display module. Inside the setup function, you can see these two lines of code. These are used to reset the scale to zero. So each time we restart the Arduino, the value will reset to zero. If you want to manually reset the scale using a button other than the reset button, then you can add a condition in the loop function. So when a particular button is pressed, these two instructions are executed and the value will reset to zero. Now let's go to the loop function. We simply calibrate the scale and using this instruction, we measure the weight. And all these other instructions are used to print the values on the serial monitor and OLED display module. I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch the Arduino based digital weighing scale in action. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.